Hi, I'm Father Anthony Hannon from Invium Patches, and this is To Prepare His Way. In this video, I'd like to offer some reflections on the first reading and the Gospel reading of the 8th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Cycle C. This first reading is from the book of Sirach, chapter 27, verses 4 to 7. When a sieve is shaken, the refuse appears. So do one's faults when one speaks. The kiln tests the potter's vessels, so the test of the just person is in tribulation. Its fruit discloses the cultivation of a tree, so a person's speech discloses the cultivation of the mind. Do not praise someone before they speak, for this is the way people are tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel passage is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 39 to 45. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like their teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, Friend, let me take out the speck in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear ba good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. Out of the good treasure of the heart, the good person produces good. And out of evil treasure, the evil person produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. <clears throat> These two readings have a certain common theme, and that is what Jesus summarized in his parables here. From the abundance of his heart, what comes from the inside gets revealed in the way someone speaks. Maybe it's dangerous doing these YouTube videos. Anyone in the whole world could see them. Not that many people are watching, I know, but still, when someone puts something on a YouTube video, they're kind of open. People can hear what they say, and from that, we know what was inside. Now look, it doesn't have to be that big of a judgment. In a way, what comes out of our mouth is a reflection of what is inside is just a truism. For think of it like this, I have a thought in my mind, you don't know what it is, but if I want to communicate that to you, I kind of translate that thought into speech or a written word and then you can see or hear the words and because you know the language and we have a common understanding of what words mean for the most part then the thought that was inside of me can now be inside of you so it's kind of a truism what speaks comes from inside but I think here Jesus is speaking of something else and Sirach is speaking about something else And I think these readings are an invitation to us, to you, to me, to every human being, to cultivate an interior life and to be careful on what, those, on what things we meditate upon. Because the more we meditate on something, so meditate, meditate means to think, eh? to concentrate and to think of something, not nothing, something. So hopefully we're reflecting, meditating on truths and good, 
the true, the good, and the beautiful even. Because the more we focus on that, the more we, we, we concentrate on that, the more like that's going to fill up our minds and hearts. And then we can speak good, and we can do good, and we can do beautiful things. But if we focus on the negative, right? Stinking thinking and everything like that. You've heard that expression before? <laughs> Maybe not. Negative thinking, uh, always looking on the bad side, um, cultivating cynicism, mistrust then that's going to come out as well. Now, none of us are perfect. So in a sense, we have these treasures, as we heard in the Gospel, as Luke presented it there, the English translation anyway. These things inside of us, and some are really good, and some are not so good. Some are evil. Some are, yeah. So we need to cultivate those good things. I find it interesting that Jesus says, you don't even see the log in your eye. You don't even acknowledge it. And here I'm thinking, this reminds me of addictions. Because usually an addict is in denial that he is an addict. And sometimes people will try to confront him and say, hey, or, or her. Right? Say, don't you think you have a drinking problem? I don't drink problem. They might say, you have a drinking problem, look at you. Denial is such a big symptom, we could say, of addictions. And the same thing goes with codependency. And that's a topic for another video. But people get into codependent relationships and they don't even see what they're doing and that they're, how they're contributing to the dysfunction and to the addiction and everything like that. It's not their fault that someone is addicted, but there's a certain dance or a certain game that, that gets played out, and they don't think it's a game at all because it's a very serious and very difficult way to live. Nonetheless, we are blind, it seems, to our own major faults. It reminds me of another saying that it goes more or less like, we are acutely aware of how others annoy us, but we are woefully unaware <laughs> to how we annoy others. Which is why I kind of think this is a good venue for me on YouTube. Because if you think that what I'm saying is beneficial, then you can keep watching. And if I'm annoying you, <laughs> you can just go and watch another video. There's millions of videos. Your time is precious. Uh, don't watch this if I'm annoying you, okay? So this is, like I said, another video I want to help those who want the help. So I'm trying to help those who want the help. And if people don't watch the video, then they don't want the help from me, or at least what I can offer. They may want help, and I can't give it to them. So they go, go find it somewhere else. No problem. There's a movie, I think it's the early 1980s, but it might be 1979, I'm not sure. And uh, it's called The Never Ending Story. And it's a really interesting movie. I haven't seen it in many years, so, you know, if you go watch it and you say, Hey, Father Anthony, did you know there was this in the movie or something? Just, just give me a break. Let me know, but, you know, maybe I forget. It was a long time ago. So, anyway, in this book, as I re remember it, in, in this movie, sorry... This little boy is reading a book. And we, the viewers of the movie, are watching this little boy read this book. But also, we get to see his imagination as, as he is understanding the story unfold. And there's one place in the book, or in the movie, sorry, where the boy is reading. And he comes to uh, this... Um, this kind of gateway. There's two pillars. And anyone who's traveling, they have to walk through this. But on the other side, there's dead bodies and skeletons and stuff. So it gets explained in this book that this boy is reading that um, whoever goes through that kind of portal, they get a glimpse of who they really are. They see themselves for who they are. And for so many people, they can't face it, and they get zapped, <laughs> and they die. 
So this boy is reading, and we're, we're just watching. We're just observers. He's kind of is too, because he's just reading. And then he goes through it. And he, the boy gets a glimpse of who he is. Or at least as the story goes, he becomes the main character in that story. I guess it takes some courage to look at ourselves. We all have masks. I think mostly our masks are not intentional. They're not, you know, I'm going to go put an act on to others. But we present ourselves in certain ways. Sometimes we're aware of it. Sometimes we're self-conscious. And other times, you know, it just, you know, who is the real you? <laughs> In the 12-step recovery programs, I'm most impressed with those who take their recovery seriously. And I'm thinking here, especially in step four of the 12 steps, where they take a, they, they take a real honest look at themselves. There's a, another principle, which is kind of like a first principle of recovery, which is you know, being committed to rigorous honesty. And here in the fourth step, they're looking at their whole life, especially those they've, they're trying to see who they have harmed because of their addiction or codependency. And they take a real honest look. And then later in steps eight and nine, they clear the wreckage of the past. past. And what this is, is they're trying to find the log in their eye. And when they find it, they take it out <laughs> and they deal with that. And dealing with this big thing, or the big things, that up to that point they were in denial of, to varying degrees. Some will say, well, they really kind of knew deep down. Okay, well, maybe, I, I don't know. But, but they take care of this log, the big issues. And then the other things, which they thought were big in their own lives, they thought, this is what I have to do. They actually are smaller, and they end up taking care of themselves. Not that anyone who practices the 12 steps becomes perfect, just like just because you, if you might go to Mass every day and go to confession every week, it doesn't mean you be, you're perfect either. But you make progress, you make improvements, <laughs> right? And life becomes a lot better. And we don't seem to hurt as people as much. Because it's not what you're intending, not what you're intending before either, probably. But it just is a lot better when we take the log out of our own eye. And it's interesting that Jesus says that there's a speck in your brother's eye, but you've got a big log. Well, I guess we all have logs. It reminds me, too, of the, this tendency that I often have, I guess, and uh, many people have, which is to give unsolicited advice. I remember back at Harvest Haven Farm, uh, back in the uh, late 1980s, and Father Basil Smith, God rest his, his uh, soul, he, um, he kind of ran what I'm going to call as a kind of a shelter. And Father Basil is a little bit of an inspiration um, for in VM Patches retreats here, um, but it's not, it's not the same thing. But it's kind of like a shelter. And people would come up to, the, uh, to Harvest Haven, and often they would come up for Mass or... Um, maybe for some spiritual direction, or a lot of the people in those days, I think, were seeking some sort of Christian community, or they heard about Father Basil, and someone said, well, you should go see him, or something like that. So they would go, and sometimes he would have an event, a barbecue or something, and people would go up. Now, Father Basil, he saw addiction and codependency in almost everybody, okay? Um, look, that's... That's just the way he had. A, he was a great. He did great work, and, and I'm not putting him down when he says that. When I say that, the fact of the matter is, he wanted everyone to find freedom. He wanted to find help people find freedom from addictions and codependency. He wanted families and marriages to heal and to work, and his heart was definitely in the right place. I have no doubt about that at all. But you know, back in the day, he would say, "Okay, uh, after lunch, we're gonna all go watch a movie." And it was a VHS recording. I don't know if the young people know what VHS is, but anyways, it was, it was, it was, it was 
tape you'd put into a machine. You could watch it on t TV. And uh, anyway, um, he'd want to show a video. What was sometimes it was a as a kind of a um, uh, a, a drama, docudrama, we could say, and sometimes it was a, a, a lecture from a professional, and. He wanted these people who he saw would really, really benefit from recovery. He wanted them to watch it in the hopes that they might break out of denial, <laughs> that they might get a glimpse and then find freedom. And they don't even know that they're trapped, maybe. Anyway, it gets complicated, I suppose. But you know what I observed? I was only, you know, 22 years old, 23 years old. That often the people who would really, really, really benefit from watching one of those movies, they were too busy trying to help others. And often they'd go in the kitchen to do the dishes. And Father Basil was a farm, so maybe he went to feed the pigs or something. And he'd come back in and the movie, you know, the, the video had already started because, you know, he'd have someone start it for him. And uh, he'd say, where's so-and-so? Where's so-and-so? <laughs> Where are they? Well, oh, they're in the kitchen doing dishes. Oh. <laughs> so we're sometimes like that. We want to help others. We want to take the speck out of other people's li lives. They're actually, we see them as big logs. They may not. But let's cultivate that interior life. This is a lot of what Envy and is, is about. When people come here, they just have they just to come on a retreat. Just to get unplugged and undrugged, I say. If you're on drugs, you get undrugged because there's no alcohol, drugs, tobacco, or vaping here. Give yourself a break from some of those things if, you're, if you happen to use those things. But, um, but mostly to get quiet. We have so many distractions, so many noises in our world. And uh, give your chance. Take courage. Be like that little boy. Take courage in that A Never Ending Story movie. Take courage. You won't die. Get quiet. Get away from the distractions. Even if those distractions are helping others. And allow yourself to see yourself for who you really are. Or a glimpse of it. Don't be afraid. Those who have seen the never ending story see that it was a delight. When that boy, he was, it was kind of puzzled, but it was a really good move, moment in that movie. And you know what? For a lot of people, when they take that fearless and moral inventory, they find out that, for many people, that they're a lot better than they thought they were. And that in itself right there is so liberating. Jesus says the disciple will not be greater than the teacher, but one who is well trained will be like his teacher. Who do we want to be like? And if we're Catholic, if we're Christians, right? We've decided to follow Jesus. We want to be like him, right? Make my heart like unto thine, Lord. Okay? Litany of the Sacred Heart. Do you not want to be loving? Jesus is love. He's love incarnate. When you come on retreat or when you do your own little get, get quiet and cultivate your interior life in your own home, wherever you are at, make sure you include meditating on Jesus and who He really is. So we know this from the Gospel accounts. So read the scriptures. Fill yourself with that. With Him. And build up those treasures. And He will get bigger. And those other things will get smaller. And then we can really speak the good news. And live the good news. And Vian Patches.